A park ranger kneels by a stream of water. She holds a container and waves. Hello, it's Ranger Melissa. Happy Glacier Science Day. Wow, I am in uh, Glacier National Park's Alpine. I am just amazed today. What a beautiful setting for Glacier Science Day. I am up around 6,600 feet and on front of me is beautiful Lunch Creek. Today, I am lucky enough to meet up with research ecologist Clint Mulfeld from the USGS, or United States Geological Survey. He's here and with his colleague, Joe Gersh, and they're studying the aquatic invertebrates up here in this alpine stream. People hike downstream. Water cascades down a small waterfall. But today, we're not gonna just talk about what lives here. We're gonna talk about how these alpine streams affect streams lower down and how all of this watershed or the hydrology and glacier is being changed with increasing stream temperatures and different stream flows. Park ranger Melissa walks toward research ecologist Clint. They stand in a rocky mountainous landscape. Hey Oh my gosh, I cannot believe it. This is an amazing day and you get to work up here. This is awesome. So we are at Lunch Creek and you guys are doing your work up here. What are you doing? Explain to me what's happening and what you're measuring up here at Lunch Creek. Melissa, thanks for visiting us in Lunch Creek and what an amazing natural laboratory to examine the impacts of climate change on aquatic ecosystems. Because yeah. we're literally here at the top of the continent and this landscape you would think is kind of immune to the effects of climate change right. and warming. But in fact, we're warming at two to three times the rate of the global right average. Right here. Right here in Glacier in National this, Park. In this alpine terrain. Yeah, so no better place to study real time the effects of climate warming on aquatic ecosystems and the species within them. Well, I noticed that, I mean, I know that you work for United States Geological Survey. You've got USGS on your hat there. so. I mean, we're in the National Park. I work for the National Park Service. So explain to me, why are you here in, in this <laughs> <Why> park? <laughs> that's why I get that frequently asked. Okay. But, you know, it's a really unique relationship. Um, we're the research arm of the Department of Interior. He examines a rock from the creek. Okay. So our job is to do research to in help inform management and conservation of the natural resources of Glacier National Park. What kind of species do you find here and how do you study them? So here we're studying some of the rarest biodiversity on Earth. And in fact, some of these species here are found nowhere else on Earth but Glacier National Park. What? Wait, say that again. They are endemic, meaning they're found nowhere else on Earth except Glacier National Park. So species Park. found here right in this stream are found nowhere else. Some of them within this stream right here are found nowhere else but Glacier National Park. Oh my Park. gosh, that's amazing. Can you tell me what they are? Multiple aquatic insects crawl at the bottom of the creek. Well, they're a or variety of aquatic insects that are cold water adapted. That means they need that cold water to survive and adapt to changing climatic conditions. Photos show how much Grinnell Glacier has melted from 1910 to 2016 and then Boulder Glacier from 1910 to 2007. And as these melting glaciers and snow fields have been declining over time, we're on a mountaintop here. And so these species within the stream networks have been migrating upward in elevation to track that cold water habitat. They need that cold water for survival. They need that cold water survival. Water rushes down the creek. Someone examines a stream and an insect crawls on a rock nearby. Okay. And when you get to the top of the continent there's else and there's no cold water left, there's nowhere else to go. It's squeeze play at the top of the continent. So this is a great natural landscape to understand how cold water adapted species are being affected by climate warming. So what we're learning here really tells us a lot about the natural environment and the integrity of it and its ability to be resilient to climate change because the more diversity you have, the more resilient these ecosystems are to environmental change. We're finding that there's these cold water dependent communities that are extremely rare, but they persisted since the last little ice age about in 1850. Okay. So that's good news for these species because despite the melting glaciers- They're still here. They're still here in Glacier National Park. And they're not only associated with glacial streams, we're finding them in snow-fed streams, and we're finding them below springs. Ice covers part of the mountainous landscape. So, 
you know, the predictions that we're going to lose biodiversity under climate change might not hold true in this case. There's some habitats and some species that are hanging on. Wow, that's amazing. An aquatic entomologist holds a net and captures insects and other life forms from the stream. Yeah, this is my colleague, Joe Gersh. He's an aquatic entomologist with the USGS. And Joe today has taken a sample of the stream macro invertebrate community living in Lunch Creek. So I put the net in the stream and I just stir up the gravel and move the rocks and so forth. The insects as well as algae and, and other things in the stream flow into the net and then I rinse it out. Aquatic insects crawl on rocks underneath the water. Joe lifts the net and water leaks from the bottom. I'll take this sample and put it in a, in a bucket and could you actually hand me that white pan? Yep. I'll give you an idea of what, what is in here. Uh, he pours water and its contents into a pan. So the sample will be preserved in alcohol and then this winter, then I'll go through and do the identifications of the insects under the microscope. An insect crawls in the pan. Yeah, so at the end of the day, we know the types of species that are here and we know how many of them are in the sample. So it's really a great estimate of the biodiversity within this stream. So here we got a sample from Lunch Creek in Glacier National Park of these rare cold water dependent stream insects. Multiple insect species rest in the pan. Clint and Melissa point to one of the insects. And we have stoneflies, caddisflies, and midges. And this one right here we're most concerned about because that's Lednia that tomana. One? That one right there? That little guy that right black? there. Okay. He's only about three millimeters long. Wow, it's tiny. Tiny, tiny, but these little insects right here are great indicators of this environmental change that's going on in Glacier. And that is the meltwater stonefly, Lednia tumana. That's a protected species under the ESA right now. Lenia tomorrow is the Latin name? Yes, yeah, species okay. and genus. Okay, but people call it the meltwater stonefly for, for common name. Yep, that's okay. a common name. Meltwater stoneflies crawl on rocks in a creek. Um, and they're widely distributed throughout the park, but they occupy very short segments of stream. But wow. their key habitat is below glaciers because glaciers provide cold water that extends far downstream, providing that cold water habitat that they need to survive and, and they depend on for persisting. Right, because I guess like you could have ice still melting like way into August and September, rather you might not have any snow left at that time, but you'd still have the ice melting. Exactly, the okay. ice keeps those streams cold throughout the duration of the summer months that are the warmest periods of the year. Wow, so um, this alpine stream though, it's all tied together. So when we go down to the streams slower down, everything is all connected and all this cold water throughout the system here and down low, it all matters. And all these changes are affecting other things besides aquatic invertebrates like native fish too, right? Absolutely. We're trying to understand the effects of climate change from the top of the continent, the water tower of the continent, all the way down from these alpine streams, downstreams to large rivers and lakes. So okay. we're trying to take a more holistic view of what's happening to these ecosystems. And what we've done to understand that is we've established these sensor networks, these transducers that measure the amount of flow going through the streams, as well as the temperatures within them. Okay. And we have these distributed throughout the park. Someone picks up a pipe shaped tool next to a stream. Well, it's, okay, like measure, me something to measure that? So yeah, it's, it's like a taking a pulse of the landscape. We're understanding the temperature and how much stream flow is moving through oh, these streams. Cool, can you show us some, like one of those sensors? Yeah, let's go take a look. Awesome, okay. Joe holds a long metal device and stands in a creek. Melissa stands nearby. Joe shows us a sensor that is tied to a rock from the stream. Oh man, I found you, Joe. This is kind of a labyrinth down here, but so this is where you're taking some measurements for um, stream flow and stream temperature for Lunch Creek, is that right? Yeah, we are. I have equipment in, in the stream here which measures how much water is coming through. It basically measures the, 
the depth of the water on an hourly basis. Okay. And then it also measures stream temperature as well. So the water's pretty, pretty warm right here. It's about 54 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, so 54 degrees Fahrenheit, that is warmer than I thought it would be actually. Yeah, considering that less than a mile above us is the source of the stream. Right. It shows us that the, the stream temperature warms very quickly coming downstream. What would you think would be the temperature of the stream like closer to the the source? The... Closer to the source, it, it's probably about 34, 35 degrees. The biology of a lot of these animals is very closely tied to the temperature right. because they're they're cold-blooded They creatures. like the cold water. They like the cold water, and their physiology is dependent on the, the ambient temperature around them. A bin collects a sample from a stream. And so a lot of the, the, the very cold water-dependent animals, like the meltwater stonefly, could only tolerate um, a certain temperature range. They can't handle water that is much warmer than say 40 degrees wow. Fahrenheit or so. Really? So you wouldn't find them down you here? You wouldn't find them down here at no all. No way. So we were, we like folks at home, we're really not that far from where we started and we would not find those same meltwater stoneflies down here than what we were. Yep. That's amazing, Joe. Water flows downstream. Trees cover the mountain for miles. So in a snowmelt fed stream like this, the water will decrease over time throughout the summer as the snow fields melt. Right. The stream will get lower and lower and lower. A graph titled Average Air Temperatures, Northern Rockies, shows that from 1895 to 2020, the average temperature has increased by 1.1 degrees Celsius. Yep. And we can tie that together with air temperatures to give us a better idea of how stream temperatures change in response to the snow cover as well as the ambient air temperatures. So I'll do this measurement and then I'll take an invertebrate sample so that we can tie together the, the community and the life history of the insects with the stream discharge and the temperatures. Awesome. Well, that so. is great. Um, it's exciting to, to find out um, what's in these streams and then to see how changes will occur over the next, who knows, 20, 30 years. So. Yeah, yeah. But I always like to think that the work that we're doing now is we'll kind those, of a snapshot yeah, in time that they'll few. be able to use in the future yeah. to look back and see that how things have changed. That is super cool to think about it like that. So, yep. Thank you for showing us. Absolutely. Melissa stands on rocks by a stream. Clint and Joe just showed us uh, what they're doing to monitor high alpine streams, looking at stream flow, stream temperature, and the organisms that live in those streams, like the meltwater stonefly. But in order to understand the larger picture, the hydrology or the watershed of this place, Clint and his team need to look at a number of different types of streams and creeks in the area. Someone lowers a small net into a bucket. A large net hangs across a stream fish swim in a contained space. One of those creeks is McGee Creek in the North Fork of Glacier National Park. So we're going to meet up with Clint and his team to look at how they monitor those lower elevation streams, looking at native fish populations and other stream characteristics. So stay tuned for part two of our series with Clint and we'll discover a whole bunch more. Thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful Friday and remember, happy Glacier Science Day. Bye. She waves goodbye.